Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another 30-minute uh, high-impact webinar that we're having here at Nexus for Change. We conduct these weekly. Um, information for last week's session on virtual breakout rooms can be found on our blog at nexusforchange.com forward slash blog for change. Um, the uh, future sessions will be there as well. And uh, so I look forward to you giving us some feedback on your experience with these 30 minute webinars. And uh, today's session is on design teams. So have you ever been in a situation where you had to plan a conference, a major session, some type of engagement, and you felt that you weren't quite certain that you had all the necessary insight and inputs to uh, come up with a design that would address all the diverse needs that you had before you. Or maybe you've been in a situation where sort of last minute you were asked to plan something, uh, a just-in-time delivery of some content or a, a really unique group that you're supposed to engage and you weren't quite sure where to start or how to do that. Or maybe you've been in a situation where um, you had a, a group of managers that approached you and said, hey, here's what we think needs to happen, but you felt pretty strongly that the eventual participants of the training, for example, um, that those weren't really represented in the request that you, um, that you had that was put before you. So our suggestion is that a great way to address those challenges is to leverage design teams. And by that, we mean a group of people that represents the voices of your stakeholders. So for a training engagement, the past or future participants, uh, depending on the kind of engagement that we're talking about, they would be community members, administrators, and potential facilitators or really any other stakeholder group that you have identified. Um, by the way, design team meetings, in my experience, work very, very well when you um, are bound to having them virtually, when you're not able to bring those folks into the same room. A lot of times in uh, our earlier thinking about design teams, a big, big challenge was, well, how do we get these people together? We kind of know who we want to talk to, but how can we get them into the same room? And in a lot of instances, the answer was we don't need to. We can have a Zoom session, uh, for example, or another uh, video conferencing platform that we can leverage to have that kind of engagement. And so uh, a little plug, I'll put the, into the chat a link again to our webinar from last week that was on virtual breakout rooms, which is one of the tools that you could leverage for a design team session. So why do design teams where sessions work or how do they work? Um, in, in our practice here at Nexus, um, I feel that there are two key elements that you have to keep in mind. The first one is the invitation. Um, obviously with a engagement that really focuses on and is dependent on who shows up, you wanna make sure that your invitation is, is very strong. And we look at that, uh, we'll look at that here in a moment in some more detail. Uh, the other piece is that in, in our experience, design team meetings don't have to be complicated but they do have to address these four core things that are listed here under number two. You have to address purpose and outcomes. You have to identify leaders and stakeholders for the event or the engagement or whatever it is that you're planning. And a lot of times sort of the first question is not just who, but who else? Um, the initial group that gathers, let's say you have a design team for an initial session of five or six folks, a big question that we always ask, who else should be here or needs to be here? Who are we missing? Who are the individuals that we should leverage that may have inside input and expertise that we can bring to the table? Um, then you'll typically have to look at the what, the activities or agenda that you're designing for. And finally, the logistics, the time, the budgets, et cetera, the how are we going to realize that? So the PLAN framework that uh, some of us, um, some of you that have worked with Nexus for Change um, are probably quite familiar with is, is really something that we I typically use to figure out how we organize a design team engagement. Um, I'm putting in the chat for you a link to a YouTube video where Dr. Katie, who's the founder of Nexus for Change and my colleague here, uh, goes into some detail as to how we can leverage that PLAN tool, tool. Again, P for purpose, L for leaders and stakeholders, A for activities and agenda, and N for the needs that we need to identify. So let's talk a little bit more about the, the invitation and why that's meaningful. Um, in order to design the best event, you want to invite as broad as possible and as diverse a group of individuals that will be present at or need to be engaged 
with uh, whatever it is that you're designing for. So whether that's a conference or a training or some other engagement, um, one of the tools that is meaningful that you could leverage for that is the idea of RACI, um, another of the 30 minute webinars that we've done on that. I'll put the link in the chat for you. Um, certainly that's one way to look at who the people are that need to be there. Again, RACI are those responsible, A, uh, so the R in RACI uh, are those responsible, A are those accountable, C are those that need to be communicated with, and I are those that need to be informed. Um, we have found that it's really meaningful to sort of learn from the past. So if you're designing a training and your organization has offered a similar training in the past, invite participants that were in that previous training to help you inform how to move forward. Um, look for community members, look for folks that maybe aren't directly affected by what it is that you're doing on the day to day, but maybe that have touch points every so often that might have meaningful input. Um, can't forget about managers and administrators. If those are part of your org structure or part of design for this, certainly you want to make sure that you include them. Uh, at the same time, we found that, let's say it's a, it's a training that you're developing and uh, you're not able to get one of the uh, managers to participate in your design team meeting. That doesn't mean that your design team doesn't have value. It just probably means that you have to identify a structure thereafter to engage them and hey, this is what the design team has developed. What are your thoughts? What are possible uh, or necessary revisions that we need to make? The other piece that uh, we have found is important and critical is to be really clear about purpose and outcomes. Why are we designing this? What are we designing to? Uh, there tend to be, in my experience, two ways to, to uh, look at that or two, two realities in that. Uh, sometimes you have a design team engagement where it's very clear that this is the purpose of the engagement. Here is the intended outcomes for what we want you all to create. Now design team, go ahead. There are other times where that is not as clearly identified. So you will have to request from whoever the, the engagement is supposed to serve for a clear frame in establishing purpose and outcomes. And uh, so that can have diff many different forms. You might have an engagement that has some sort of fairly vague, here's the idea of what we're after. Part of the design team engagement at oftentimes will be, okay, how do we tease out what the actual purpose is? What is the why? What are the intended outcomes? And so a lot of times that can be a challenge for the design team to start with rather than a preset, here are the expectations that we're asking you to design to. The reason that I believe this is a great tool that works even when you're not in an ideal state of um, ideally, I want all of these people present and ideally I want to have uh, four or five hour sessions to do this planning. A lot of times we're pressed for time. We find that rather than five sessions that we'd be after, we get maybe three sessions and rather than doing 90 minutes, people are only available for 45. Um, one reality is that the more diverse the group is that you can bring together, the more likely you will have impactful results. And um, I think for many of us that has been sort of a an assumption or, or a gut sense that, hey, if I get more diverse folks together, I can get better results. Uh, there's increasing research over the last couple of years that really bears out that that is not just um, a sense that we have, but that is factual, that the more diverse voices that you bring together, the better the results. And the more innovative the results are, I think that's really a key thing to sort of get a hold, of, that, uh, hold on, rather, that if you really want to be innovative, you're not going to get innovation from the same group of people rehashing the same kinds of things that they've always thought about. You need to bring diversity to the table to get innovative results. Second piece is that if you have this broad representation, the, the image here I thought um, was interesting. It's a, a care team in a um, healthcare setting. You got to make sure that you have diverse influences and diverse representation from the different teams that affect, in this case, a patient's care. So you, uh, you see physiotherapists and you see folks from logistics and services, you see people from research, you see surgery. Um, figure out what that looks like for the specific engagement that you're working on and looking at and identify what sort of the core teams are and ensure that you can try to get a representation from each of those to the best of your ability. Again doesn't mean that if you can't identify a certain team member from, hey, this is a core group that we need to have. We don't have that person, so we can't have a meeting. 
I don't think that that's true. I think that oftentimes you still can have impactful insights with whoever shows up at the same time. You want to be aware that, hey, we really missed the voice of this particular group. So we want to go and communicate with them what it is that we found. If you've done all that work, if you've been careful about identifying and talking about purpose, if you've had a clear invitation that was as broadly uh, inviting and as diverse in who it is that you're inviting to your design team, I have found and, and take some great comfort, if you will, in the fact that I believe that the, uh, the principles of open space technologies can apply. That once you've done all that work and put in all that effort, whoever shows up are going to be the right people. That whatever happens is the only thing that could have. That when it starts is the right time, because otherwise it wouldn't. And when it's over, it's over. We found that design teams don't work or don't work well when they're intended as a gimmick and somebody has an expectation that, well, we'll bring this design team together and we'll have these diverse voices, but really we just want them to sanction this particular item that we've already decided on or this particular, hey, this is what we need to do. This is what this training needs to look like. We just want you guys to sign off on it. Um, that's not meaningful or that's not designing. That's just asking people to sign off on something. And Again, if you're just bringing together the same group that's always designed the trainings, chances are that you're lacking in diversity and chances are that you're not really going to be able to address or bring forth something new and meaningful and more impactful than what you've been doing. Chances are, if you're asked to redesign or design a new training, that somebody has identified that the previous engagement was lacking in some form or, or was hoping for more impact. And so the more diverse you can make that engagement, the more meaningful it will be. Some of the case examples where here at Nexus we have used design teams. Um, we do one every quarter. We have a local gathering called the uh, Great Lakes Exchange. Um, for those of you that are local, I will uh, put the link to that in the chat. Dan and Phil, I think, have been participants in past ones that we've had. Uh, it's a Saturday engagement that looks at how do we um, learn about and learn by doing tools and methods and approaches of collaborative change together. We have a Friday evening that we bring a design team together that designs the Saturday morning engagement. Uh, when we first started that, um, those of you that know me a little bit uh, know that I'm originally from Germany and it seems that all of my sort of, no, we need to plan, we need to spend some time getting this together. The idea of meeting on a Friday evening to design a Saturday event was, uh, was very stressful and anxiety inducing to me for a long time. I found that every time that I have allowed myself to be part of this process of whoever shows up, we're going to design the Saturday engagement. It was really meaningful. And the folks that show up brought their particular expertise and were able to bring together a, uh, an engagement on Saturday that would have been maybe not less meaningful, but certainly different if they hadn't showed up on, on Friday evening. Um, so that's sort of a, a really snapshot. That's usually a, two and a half hour, maybe three hour session that we do on Friday evening to design a 10 to three uh, event on Saturday where this works wonderfully. We've also used it in much more structured approaches. We've used it to um, help the folks at eExtension design their impact collaborative methodology for community engagement. And so that was a successive series of um, twice a month engagements of 90 minutes where um, Typically, we had at least a few folks that were at a previous session would show up for the new session, but we had quite a bit of, of turnaround and new members at each of these engagements, and that added incredible value to how do we plan out the phases and stages of um, a process that really is aimed at engaging communities in an impactful way. Um, we have also done design teams for conferences when uh, Dr. Katie or myself have been engaged at uh, conference designs, either for BGSU or for Nexus. Um, we've brought together design teams that typically would meet um, anywhere from six months out up until uh, shortly before the actual sessions to create the, the clear structure and agenda for those uh, engagements. And finally, we've done it typically for training engagements. Rather than um, a client asking us to come in and do a training for their staff on pick a topic, and saying, okay, management has said, this is what we're supposed to train on. 
we would try to, okay, who are some of the staff that will be trained? Uh, is it a unionized environment? Should we ask some union representatives? Um, who are some participants of previous trainings that were aimed at a similar subject matter? To invite those people in, uh, a group as small as five, a group as large as 12, to have conversations as to what the meaningful insight and output would be for them. Hey, this is what we want from this training. We understand here is management's view. Here's some of what we're looking for. And typically you can get to a more meaningful engagement of those individuals if they had a voice in creating that engagement. With that, I wanted to share with you, here's a, a invitation or a charter as um, this client called it. This is again from eExtension and I thought it was meaningful to sort of set up a focus for what a design team could um, focus on. And so with that, I would love to engage you all in a little Q&A. What, what are some questions that you might have? There is a question in the chat. Excellent. Hey, yo. Um, and a very good one. Do you work with the agreed upon principles of engagement in the way folks meet? And I may have missed this in the presentation. No, you didn't miss this in the presentation. So, Teo, you want to take that one? Yes. Um, so, agreed upon principles of engagement. I, yes, absolutely. We do have principles of engagement that, however, are typically identified with that specific group. I think it really depends on the particular group that you're engaging. So we've had in the examples that I shared with you, the, uh, the Great Lakes Exchange where we design on a Friday evening for the Saturday morning. Um, we've had groups of five that have done that, that were more academically focused in the majority of who showed up. And we've had group of 12 to 20 that have done that, uh, some of whom attended virtually and so the, the group sort of, that's one of the initial pieces that, we, that we're after to say, who else needs to be here? Is there somebody we need to identify that either for this or a future session we need to engage? And we typically hone in on what are the, what are the principles of engagement that we need for this particular group to function and to work well? I, I, I do believe that the specific question are the basic design principles is very applicable. I mean, you have design principles, like everybody speaks, um, that you come with an open mind. And those are just good convening skills. And I, I don't think you would ever not have a meeting that had those. It's just an assumption. And I think the question, which this is what Craig's all about. So I think it's um, appropriate and raises it as an issue for me is do you make those explicit or how do you make those explicit to yourself and to the participants? I'm going to take advantage of knowing that Craig and Patricia are on the call and put you on the yes. spot. Um, how do you feel about the term facilitator in the context of design team meetings? Is it a facilitator or a convener? Many of us would not have made the distinction if we weren't exposed to your deep belief in there's a difference. Look at Patricia's smile. Well, Craig, you want to take this? <laughs> I, I think you should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Go for it. And then I, I might have an opinion also. Yeah, OK. No. I, I, in some ways, uh, there, there's a somatic element, uh, a semantic element to this, uh, and um, and somatic. Yeah, and in my in in our work, uh, just so you know, our book is called "The Art of Convening." Um, we we said that convening is really uh, an acceptance of taking responsibility and accountability and a commitment to the whole project. So if it's a design team, we're considering all the aspects of that design team, because that's what we're talking about today, from conception to a commitment to action, or what we call purpose, or the heart of the matter to a commitment to action. Facilitation 
is clearly a part of the convening process. So the reason I asked the question about uh, principles of engagement or principles of conversation or basically principles along the way is what are the behaviors that we attach to the engagement, whatever it might be. In this case, a design team of which we have many over, you know, we, and, and, and I pre really appreciate what you brought us through um, with yeah. thinking of design team, uh, because there's some things that, that, that I've learned that we haven't really thought about. Um, but the difference in, in part is facilitation um, definition is to make things easier. That's, that's kind of the, the dictionary. And for convening, it's really, in a way, seeing things whole and coming from that perspective um, and taking that, as I said before, accountability, responsibility, and a commitment from the beginning to the end of that engagement. Thank you. Thank you. Anything to add, Patricia? Well, I'd just like to say, first of all, I love that you're illuminating the P, I was saying to Craig, within our convening community, we think we're making things visible. And yeah. I love the way you're bringing out the chunks of collaboration right. and making them visible. So design team element, as I hadn't thought about it, is from a diversity of, of perspective, you know, naming it in that way. So I really appreciate that that's what you've brought forward, that the design team element, which we use constantly it's a crucial part of every facilitation or convening opportunity and and what you're bringing forward is that crucial component of all the voices being brought forward to be heard for the towards the final outcome or the desired outcome of inclusion and best possible outcomes moving you know to to create so um, that's what I would have to offer at this point. I love that you're, you're illuminating and making visible with often the invisible of pieces of collaboration. Thank you. Uh, there was one more question here from Phil in the chat. Any tips relating to generating interest in groups of people who have become stagnant and are mostly just going through the motions? Um, okay. Phil, in my experience, a lot of times that is directly related to a sense of my input doesn't matter. Um, I have some inclination as to one particular group that you might be thinking of. And I think um, when we, like you say, have people going through the motions, they're expected to show up. They're expected to be a uh, de facto representative, but really they're just there to sign off on what somebody else has already created or decided then you'll get disengaged folks that, that feel stagnated and are annoyed that they have to be there. If you really offer them a voice and you make a serious effort in, hey, we are shifting this particular piece of our engagement into this direction, or we're, we're now scheduling another session at a different time due to some uh, concerns that you've voiced. Um, so acknowledge, not just acknowledging the voices, but actually acting on the inside will go a long way to motivate, uh, I believe, other folks to get out of that rut and to want to be participants of the process that you're putting forth. With that, um, quick plug again for our sponsors. Um, we're up at uh, one minute uh, after 11.30 Eastern. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, our efforts here are supported by the new doctorate program at Bowling Green State University and by Nexus for Change. If you go to nexusforchange.com, you can find links to our blog uh, with a lot of the additional resources of past sessions that we've had. And our events calendar will have future sessions. I thank you all for being here and uh, hope to see you next week. Thank you. <laughs>